Bruchim Aboyim. Thank you for coming. The uh, topic tonight, we're going to call the race. Uh, when it comes to prayer, it's interesting, losing the race is much better than winning the race. So what I really mean, if you will, let's take a scenario of a uh, person who he and his family were captured and being tortured. And the richest, most powerful man in the world sent his own personal SWAT team, company of SEALs, to save him and his family. And after they're taken out by his private helicopter and taken to his personal hospital, and there they are recuperating, brought back to health. And after that, he even goes so far as to hire the man, give him a job and a position, and to have him start all over. And this man is so grateful for his benefactor that he tells his benefactor, I know there's nothing I can give you. There's nothing that you need. But I want you to know that there'll be not, there won't be a day in my life that I won't be standing in front of you to show my gratitude and to tell you how much I appreciate what you've done. In fact, three times a day I will say to you how much I appreciate the fact that you saved not only me but my family. And what he says to the, his benefactor every day is, goes like this. My dear benefactor, in the bottom of my heart, I would like to thank you for your saving my family and myself and all the pain and suffering we experienced. Without your assistance, we could not have survived. And if there is anything, anything at all that I can ever do to be helpful to you, please don't hesitate to ask me, and I am forgiving you of that sincerely. You would think that he would say, my dear benevolent benefactor, from the bottom of my heart, I would like to thank you for saving my family and myself from all our pain and suffering that we experienced. Without your assistance, we could have not have survived. If there is anything, anything at all that I can ever do to be of help to you, please don't hesitate to ask me. I am forever in your debt, sincerely. And the sad thing about it is that God does this for us every day, every moment of every day. And there's no place that he really asks for this. But he hinted at the fact of making blessings, of us praising, and the rabbis even gave us a sitter, a book that's in order. And it's interesting, one of the prayers that people, all people, one form usually or another, wind up saying <clears throat> is the Kaddish. And I know people that they have the tune correct, but the words are totally wrong. And because they're in congregations that say it so quickly that they never get a chance to really learn how to say it properly. You know, I play guitar and as a kid I grew up listening to the radio and picking up songs. It wasn't as easy as today where you can you know, YouTube anything you want and get the words and whatever. So a lot of times when I would sing a song, I really wasn't singing the words properly. I had the tune right. And the word I was using rhymed. It just wasn't the right word. And then sometimes when you would find what the words were, you'd be kind of chuckling to yourself because you've been singing that song for the last 10 years with the wrong words. But it sounded okay and nobody said anything because nobody else knows the words right either. And, but that's okay for a song. But... When you sing praise to God, when you're thanking God for all that he's given you, for your life, for your children's life, and, and I mean, life's a minefield. There's so many things that we are saved from every moment of every day by being a minute early, a minute late. We have no idea what type of things people plan to do, even in the world. I mean, the fact that the world exists is amazing. In fact, there is a prayer in Hallel in the praise of God, that's only two verses, and it says, Halu kol goyim, let all the non-Jews praise God, because they know better than we do what they've wanted to do to us, and that God has, in one form or another, stopped them from doing so. But there's so many things that are obviously gifts from God, things that have saved us. And 
if you don't say the words and you don't say them properly, you really haven't fulfilled the obligation. Because the whole idea of the Kaddish is praise of God. And the reason why a son, which is the main ob 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 obligation, saying Kaddish, says Kaddish for a mother and father, is because the one sin in life that you cannot repent for in life is what we call a chil Hashem, desecrating God's name. Now you can try to counteract it with being more of a kiddush Hashem, sanctifying God's name, but it still stays. And the only thing that can obliterate that sin of chil Hashem is when a son says the Kaddish. But if he says the Kaddish in a way that he's swallowing words, or if he says it, I mean, even if I'm going to say what I just said, and I'm going to say, my dear, but another factor, in the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you. For and I say it quickly, even if you can hear every word, it doesn't come across. Because the truth of the matter is, I made this up. And when I finish saying it now, it almost brought tears to my eyes. Because when you say it slowly and you really think about what it is, it means something. It connects to something. And it really, it's not that God needs it. It's that we need to connect to God in that way and to connect to everyone that does us any type of good favor in any way, shape, or form. And the truth of the matter is that prayer is really a combination to open a lock. And if you slur words, if you mispronunciate words, if you miss words, the lock doesn't open. And these gates of prayer that go to God in heaven Stay locked. And these prayers go up to that gate and they stay there. One of the reasons why we pray with a minion is we have a belief that when ten men pray together, even if it's not all that it should be, the power of those ten souls pushing on the gate opens it up. But still, God's got to look at this, at the quality of the prayer that you're saying. And, and you know, I hear it all the time. God understands. It's, it's much like an example, and it's a nice example of a parent. You know, many times you have a small child, and you hear the child babble, and they're talking, and you have no idea what the child said. But the mother does. So people take that same analogy that God, even though people pray the way that they pray, that God, as a benevolent father, understands there's a saying in Hebrew, not by bread alone does a man live. Which means, again, has its own meaning. But if you take the word halechem, you move the letters around, it spells the word mechila. Not for forgiveness alone can a man live. There, it's true, God will understand, God will forgive. But he'll understand and he'll forgive when you try to do the best that you can and you miss the mark. Story again, am I told, and I think on prayer, of a man who got lost in the forest and the sun was setting. He didn't have a sitter. And he sat down by a tree and he looked up to heaven and he said, God, I'm stupid. I got lost. And then worse than that, the sun's setting. I haven't, the, I haven't prayed the afternoon prayer. So I'll stay here. And as the sun's setting, I'm going to repeat the olive bays the alphabet, over and over again, and your benevolence, please make words out of them. Let that be my prayer for today. And it was said that in heaven, that was the greatest prayer of the day. So great, Th that's true. God understands. Because what tefillah is, avodas halev, is the service of the heart. But if your heart's not into it, and if you're running to try to be the fastest that you can be, and you finish before everyone else, and even in prayer, I look, I, I see people, they finish and they stand around. Can you imagine if someone let you into a vault that was filled with diamonds and they gave you three minutes in the vault to take all the diamonds you can and you take some diamonds after a minute and you start talking to the guy next to you. <laughs> you would be grabbing diamonds and if someone tried to talk to you, you wouldn't want to hear about it. I got three minutes here. You know, how many more pockets can I get? I got a bag? I mean, I want to shove all the diamonds I can in. 
Especially what we call tefillah, the Shmon Esrei, when you have a personal audience with God. Why would anyone rush? Why would anyone want to leave? Why wouldn't we want to stay just a second longer? And especially, sure, everyone, we live a life. I get it. And so does God. People have to get to work. People have obligations. But still, while you're there, this thought this, of, of trying to, at least within reason, of trying to connect, instead of running like a machine gun, the words that you cannot po possibly hear them. You know, I always think, as an example, we all go to the gas station and fill our cars. Have you ever looked at the pump and watched the numbers go? You can read them. You can't say them. Your mouth just doesn't work that fast, even though you can see them. And so, too, with prayer. If you actually have the ability to say it that quickly, really, that's the, that's the objective? When I was a young man, young boy, I went to Hebrew school. They used to test us how many words could you read a minute. What a disgusting thing to do. Because the, the young person in the class who read the slowest was the best off. And the person that could read quickly, somehow being able to articulate the words, was lost. Now, there are Hasidic groups who believe that if you daven quickly, your mind doesn't wander. And that's a good reason. I find that to be an excuse. A person should learn to concentrate. A person should work on concentrating. Listen, athletes do it all the time. They keep working on making their game better by practicing again and again and again. And that's where God will understand. So if you're praying, I mean, we cover our eyes for six words, Shema Yisrael, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Why? Just to try to concentrate on six words. And I get it, it's tough. But still, it becomes our obligation to keep working at it. And that's all God wants from us. Do it right. Show your effort. Work at it. God pays a person not for success. What God pays a person for is effort. When he sees a person trying to do it better, spending a minute, lo minute longer, coming to a minion a little bit earlier so that maybe he has a minute longer to pray. And even though it may be difficult, maybe he can't do it every day, but to make that effort. And that becomes the key. But, you know, I say Kaddish in my shul, and I've had many a battle trying to slow it down. And I always laugh and I tell them, when I get to heaven, please accuse me in front of God that I set the cottage too slowly. So on the other hand, being torturous isn't an, isn't an answer either. But there has to be some middle ground where, again, if someone had saved your family, had gone over and above and needed nothing, and all you could give them is your gratitude, why would you rush to do that? And how would they want to even hear you? But at the same time, if they saw that you went out of your way to thank them with a full heart and with humility, concentrating on the words, day after day, not getting accustomed to it, not because I've said it yesterday or I've said it a hundred times or a thousand times or a million times, but every day feeling that same thing because it's still real. Because every time this person holds his child in his hand, every time this person wakes up and something doesn't hurt, every time a person puts his hand in his pocket and there's some money there, every time he walks out his door and nobody's there waiting for him, there's so many things that a person needs to say thank you for. And when a person thinks that and it connects to it, take a minute, just take a minute, and if it's only one prayer, especially the standing prayer of the Shemona Esrei, the Amida, and try to concentrate just a little bit more. And I promise you the words, the words that God will give you will be overflowing. Because what you'll do basically is put a smile on God's face, and he deserves it. God bless. Have a great Shabbos again, and thank you for coming.